reality. Yes, we take whatever thought says we are, we make a major mistake. The major mistake is that we believe that thought is knowing. In other words, when thought says you are sick, we believe the thought to know what we are. But the thought is not knowing. A thought is known. You know the thought. You perceive a thought. A thought does, does not know you. You know the thought. This is a major uh, flaw in our reasoning. Is that we give thought consciousness. We, 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 we believe that thought is conscious. But thought is not conscious. Consciousness is conscious. Consciousness is conscious. Spirit is conscious of the thought. Yes, yes. Consciousness is conscious. Only consciousness is conscious. Nothing else is conscious but consciousness. Only uh, 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 yeah. Only wood is wood. Nothing else besides wood is wood. I don't know if it's a good metaphor, but um, you see what I mean? Only consciousness is conscious. Yeah? Only consciousness is conscious. A thought is not consciousness. A thought is the substance of thought is consciousness, but thought is not conscious. The substance of all experiences, of all events, of the world, of what we call the world, is consciousness. So in a way, everything is consciousness, but it is the reality of consciousness that is the reality of everything. Everything's reality, meaning the dream's reality, is the dreamer. When you are <coughs> dreaming that you are in Acapulco, the reality of that dream, because there is a certain reality to that dream. You cannot say, when you wake up in the morning, you say, I dreamt I was in Acapulco, right? So there is some reality to that dream. But the reality of that dream, that whatever teeny tiny reality there is to that dream, is from you. You, the dreamer, you, the, you know, you. There isn't like a re an independent reality of thought that is not apart from you. The reality of the dream is the dreamer. So the reality of all perceptions is consciousness. So when, you, when the thought arises, I am this body, and you believe oh, there is a reality to that, there is a reality to, to the body. The reality of the body is the reality of consciousness. Because there's only one reality. And consciousness is not made out of bits and pieces. It's wholeness. Meaning it has borderless quality. Consciousness is, is not an object. Not something that is perceived. Whatever is perceived has a form, has boundaries. But consciousness is not perceived, it's the perceiver. The ultimate reality. That's how I use the term consciousness. I know other teachers, because I don't know, you know, where you, you know what your background is, use the term consciousness in different ways. That's why I'm repeating uh, how I use the term consciousness here so it doesn't confuse you in your in your uh, in your understanding. Yes. So do not give that much weight or importance to feelings or thoughts or emotions arising. What's the big deal? So what if a thought arises? There's nothing wrong with thoughts arising. I mean, if the sun shines on trees or shines on the Sahara Desert, what's the difference? The sun shines irrespective of whatever it's shining on. Yes? Just 
realize that you are the sun, you are the sunshine, you're not the desert or the forest. Right? You understand? Because if you identify with the desert, you're suffering because you say, oh my God, and it's too hot. If you identify with the forest, you say, oh my God, it's too uh, humid, whatever. Okay? Depends on your temperament. I'm just using it as a metaphor. Don't identify with whatever the sun shines onto. Don't identify at all. But recognize that you are that that perceives all perception. You perceive the thought. You perceive the sensation. Yes? And as the perceiver, you are not a perceived. You're not an object perceived, a form perceived. You're a perceiver of form, of thought, of sensation, of perception. The perceived has a limited degree of freedom. You know, a car can drive up to 100 miles per hour. Okay. It will, the life of a car with very good uh, buffing and if you clean it every day and so on is 120 years. Okay. The perceived has a lifespan. Is temporal, is, is, is in the world of the mind, is a mind event, meaning it's in time and space. But the perceiver, the sun that shines onto the desert, that is eternal. Because the sun that's shining on the desert, in 5,000 years, who knows, the desert's move with the wind and so on, it might be uh, an ocean in 5,000 years or 10,000 years. In the forest that the sun was shining on in 10,000 years, there might be fires and so on, might be tundra. So what is perceived is impermanent and is changing thoughts and feelings and sensations and emotions. They're impermanent. And they don't define you. Nothing defines the sunshine. You see it as a metaphor. Nothing defines the light of consciousness or the, the reality of consciousness. There is no higher reality. Whatever that higher reality is, that's what I refer to as consciousness. Consciousness, I refer to consciousness as the absolute reality. That everything else borrows its reality from it. Like the moon borrows its the moonshine at night borrows the sunlight from the sun. It's, it's, it has an apparent reality from the absolute reality of consciousness of the sun. Same thing with the dream state. Same thing with the body-mind experience. It has a borrowed reality from consciousness, from, eternal, from eternity. Eternity doesn't born and die. Yes? Eternity does not born and die. Only in the, in the field things change. Like uh, in the Upanishads with, what was it, uh, 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 Arguna? Argu, Arjuna? Arjuna. Arjuna is, he was uh, uh, going to battle. And there were going to be a lot of killed people and armies and whatever, also things shifting in the field. But his teacher, Nagarjuna? Krishna. Krishna. So Krishna was telling him, realize your true nature. Don't worry about the dream. In the dream, you have to do what the dream does. It's a dream. There are dream events. There is a connection, a flow, like the top of the ocean. The waves are connected in how, you know, with the wind and whatever, this wave is going up, the next wave might be, have a different shape. It's, it's, it's a uh, panorama. It's a, in a, 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 a mind event of the ocean, which is the, the, the unmoved depth and tranquility of being. Mary.
I've always been a truth seeker, uh, but I've gotten very caught up in a lot of illusions uh, yeah. over my lifetime. Yeah. And um, somehow I've been practicing A Course in Miracles for you know, so many years, but somehow I came across Muji, mm -hmm. and I was very taken by the truth of it, and I tried to put it down and walk away, but I was still driven back to it. Mm -hmm. And then I was reading this pamphlet from A Course in Miracles, and this doctor wrote this article, and he said that he practices Dandanta with it. Mm -hmm. And um, I guess what my question is, where my confusion is, is about my path. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, like I've been a truth seeker, and trying to find my path mm -hmm. and consider myself to be very spiritual, believe in God. Mm -hmm. um, but I get off the track because I get caught up in illusions a lot of times, trying to stay on the track, um, and then I'm trying to follow this new um, witnessing, mm -hmm. um, which I'm very taken to. Um, but then I find it a little bit confusing. Mm -hmm. to, I'm, so I mm -hmm. find it, but I found that you seem to be very, very well versed and knowledgeable, mm -hmm. you know, about the whole process. So I guess what my question is, is, you know, I guess trusting in the path, mm -hmm. trusting in, maybe trust is the mm -hmm. right word I want to mm -hmm. be using. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, all the different methodologies, different schools, different practices that uh, uh, so many of them, they have in the end one destination. And that destination is the is peace and happiness. The peace and happiness that does not come and go, that is not dependent on anything, that is the complete freedom. So the realization of your true nature is the realization of the freedom, the peace and the happiness that you are. That, when you compromise that, then you're on a longer journey. Yeah? If you hear that and take it to heart, then that will call you to it. The freedom, the realization of your true nature, the realization, which is the realization of your freedom, the peace and the happiness that you are, will call you to it. In terms of the practices and where you pitch your tent in a way, go to what resonates the most for you, where you're happy, where your heart recognizes something that bypasses the mind. Even though the mind might bring up roadblocks and struggle with it, go with what 